This video is about a very, very old RCD or GFCI, which I will be taking apart later in the video, but first there is a story. Now it's worth mentioning it's so old that it's actually marked current operated earth leakage circuit breaker and for the pedantic people, an earth leakage circuit breaker was traditionally a different type of circuit breaker, but this is a very early RCD and uh, it is marked earth leakage circuit breaker. In fact, it's not really marked residual current device, it may be pre-dating that, but it uses a sense coil around the live and neutral and to trigger a tripping device if it detects a difference. And this one used to protect uh, this house. It used to feed an old Wilex fuse board. So here's the story. One day I was at this bench and I was making a video and the blue collar trash chandelier in the neighboring room uh, went out and I thought, oh, that's another one of those lamps that's failed because, well, this video kind of encompasses some other videos. The blue collar trash chandelier was basically just these Y splitters that allowed you to plug a couple more lamps into one holder. But if you cascaded them, you ended up with a big sort of antler type thing with uh, loads of colored lamps in it. And these lamps were not that reliable. I had one that went pop while I was making a video again. And uh, it's the lighting circuit. It blew the fuse in that lighting circuit. So I just assumed the same thing had happened again. And I went out. I turned the switch off for this light. I went out and I pulled the neighbouring lighting circuit fuse and put it in, brought the other one in because it was a rewirable fuse and I brought it back to this bench to rewire. So when I brought it back to the bench to rewire, I looked at the wire. Now let me just grab a notepad here and a pen. If you look at a fuse wire that is blown, if the, say for instance, you've got a bit of fuse wire going between these two lines and it normally looks like that. If it's like, it's really short and it's like splattered, you know, it's, it's peppered everywhere. That means it blew with force. If, on the other hand, it looks like this, it's melted and it's balled up at the ends. It means that it, uh, it failed with overcurrent. This one had balled up at the end, and that was a really low load lighting circuit. So it shouldn't have balled up at the end. It should have, you know, there was no nothing to actually make a, a six amp fuse or a five amp fuse bar in that case actually do that. And if this had been working at the time, this little uh, power meter that uh, you'll notice it's strobing colours, that's just because the way it works, it goes red, green, blue, red, green, blue behind a very fast LCD. If this had been working and not doing what it's doing at the moment and just saying, I've lost connection, I'd have known before that that something was drawing a lot of current. But I didn't. And then there was the final bit of the jigsaw here, the final, th the third fault, because there were three faults occurred simultaneously. This did not trip. And this should have tripped because that fault should have actually made this trip, but it didn't. So I didn't realize I'd, I reg tested this regularly by pushing the button and it did trip. I thought this was working, but it turned out that something had gone wrong. It is working, but it had stuck in that instance. So let me show you what had gone wrong. In another previous video, I had shown uh, an old MK switch, a very old one that had caused problems. When I turned it on and off, it arced slightly. And when the it arched slightly. Some LED lamps, notably a Philips style of LED lamp, didn't like that and they failed. So I changed it for a modern snap action decisive switch. The wall plate box for this was a lazy builder wall box. One that is thin enough that they just need to cut into the plaster uh, and everything can be run with absolute minimal effort without cutting into the stonework too much. If you look at even a standard switch in this, there's not much room in there. It is really tight to the back of that. So there's very little room for wiring, particularly with multi-way switches, which that was. Normally, I'd use at the very least a box like this that has, you know, loads more room in it for the wiring. Or with these modern electronic jam-packed stuff with electronic switches, I might even choose to use a deeper box just to allow for the fact that there's a lot more on the back of switches. But anyway, a contractor had used one of these boxes and because there was no earth thermal in that box, they had attached the earth to the back of this, the ground wire, by the one screw they'd held this box into the wall with. So they'd basically twisted the wire around the screw and tightened the screw on it. I did not spot that they had left the rag of wire up 
and then they'd taken their snips. Let me find a pseudo pair of snips. And they had cut the rag of wire off like basically they got an angle and cut it, which meant what they actually left was a small copper spike sticking out. I did not see that. And when I was uh, replaced the switch, I carefully dressed the wire. I kept it clear of that screw because it was sticking out. And uh, as I put this on, because it was such a tight fit and there were so many wires in it, one of them moved across and went onto that spike. But no big deal. It was winter. The I screwed this up. The plastic was harder because it was cool temperature. Summer comes, the plastic softens, and the wire actually, the little spike actually pierced through the uh, plastic insulation and it shorted out. So it was live to earth. Now, normally, in a normal installation, live to earth would make quite a bang. It would blow the fuse. It would be very decisive when I put a new fuse in. It would also blow... I'd already put the other fuse in, I went back over and clamped it and it was showing a current of 8 amps in that circuit. I did not realise at that point in time that this wasn't working. I didn't have a clue up to that point because of this, it's just everything lining up. And so I went in this hunt for the mysterious, it, it looked to me like there was a live to neutral fault with passing lots of current. Long story short, I ended up, it took a long time, thermal imaging camera, traced it to this switch just by looking for that slight temperature difference of the cables in the attic. And uh, took this off, and as I just loosened it with the power on, I could hear it going kss, kss, and the sparking and arcing. And the reason for the low, well, the eight amps fault current was simply because this is a this house is fed by a TT system, which means TT stands for Terra Terra. There's an earth electrode outside my house. There's an earth electrode at the substation. That's the fault current. That's why it has to be protected. The whole house has to be protected by an RCD. And when I finally worked this out, I thought, why didn't this work then? I pushed the button and it didn't trip. I turned it off. I turned it on again, pushed the button and it worked again. It had just got sticky with old age. And that's the point I decided, right, I have to change stuff. I have to get uh, a new, I might as well get a new consumer unit with circuit breakers and dual RCD. Replace this with, a, with an isolator feeding that. And here it is. Here is the offending switch. Now we're ready to take it to bits. Now, looking at this, I can see they've kind of put wax over these as insulation. A sort of gooey, hot melt type of waxy stuff. I don't know how easy it's going to be to get this out. I don't think it's going to come out that easy. It could take a while. I could be faffing around for ages. And also, there's these two holes here with what looks like pins. I don't. They look like friction push pins. So this may take a while to take apart. So I'm going to pause while I do that. One moment, please. And we're back. This is already making loud, springy, metallic noises. I've got a horrible feeling it's about to disintegrate. Oh, it didn't. That's all right. Oh, look at the big... Look at the big arc breakers there. That is quite neat. Uh, and fairly decent looking contacts. It turns out I didn't need to unscrew these, but I did. The reason the screws were covered in waxy stuff underneath this little hot melt, I've just tipped everything out, uh, underneath is simply because they're part of the contacts, they're live, so that was insulation as well as uh, and other covering stuff. So, is there any active electronics in here? I don't think there is. This is the trip mechanism. And it's one of those little delicate uh, trip mechanisms. Let's see if I can make it stay set. Let's uh, zoom down on this. So this looks like the sense coil here. And it's got the incoming supply running through it. Now, incidentally, that, that's uh, quite thin wires. Give What was the current rating of this? 80 amps. Uh, those are quite thin wires, are they not, for 80 amps? I guess they're probably... And the insulation on them looks really thin. And that's probably just to get it through that. Oh, the insulation is... Kind of... It is very, very thin insulation. I wonder if it's kinda or something like that. Right, tell you what, let's see if I can get this out. That is a little trip mechanism, though. I wonder if there's a... I wonder if that's the type that just has magnetic remnants, or if that coil alone is what trips this. Can I reset that? It 
So, oh, uh, this is one of these things that it once it's a, if it trips, it doesn't seem to push in. So I'm guessing it is purely this magnetic actuation here. But once it trips, it will automatically open these blades. It won't, even if you hold the switch down, it's not going to allow you to override that. Right, tell you what. Let's see if we can get more stuff out of here. This is where it might actually be useful, having taken those screws out. So this is the sense coil. It's shielded. Oh, that makes sense, doesn't it? To have it shielded. And the two wires are coming out. We've got a, a sense winding, plus we've also got the test winding. Where is the test resistor? The, there must be a test resistor in here. I'm going to have to get this out. I'm not sure how it's going to come out. I don't know how it's secured in here, so I'm going to have to pause momentarily. But I would expect that in here there's going to be a resistor. And I'll maybe cut this off and uh, see if I can find the actual sense wires that are used to actually trigger that mechanism. Although I'm seeing the two wires going through are connected to the two green wires. So the green wire must be the sense wire. Is this just a solid core? Does this not have a winding around it? And this red one will be the resistor one that actually is used to trip it. Right, tell you what, one moment please. Continuing on. So it turns out this is just bizarrely simple. Here is the little trip mechanism. It's magnetic latching one. So at the moment when this red plunger has been pushed in, it has latched a little arm magnetically against this coil. Very coarse coil. If I connect a battery across here, it pings that out. So to reset it, you have to push it in, which is really common with these. But that's it. Uh, but it gets even more bizarre. So this is going to click out. Click. Just it takes very little current to actually trigger that, which is just as well, because this isn't a winding, this thing here. Let's say I cut some wires out of these. And this is super thin insulation to fit it through that core. Freaky. So we've got the red wire going through. We've got the two, we've got the live going out one direction and going through the load and then coming back through neutral so that this core here, and it is just a bare core, I'm guessing. Let's see if we can get into this because I can see other stuff in here. I can see what looks like a screening fall wrap around it, but it doesn't look like a transformer as such. Can I get into this? Maybe not. Oh, you know what? I can see what it is. This is foil wrapped round and round to create a core uh, of just basically roll. It's a roll of metal strip. That's bizarre. I've not seen that before. The red wire is the test wire. When current, when you press the test button here, it simply connects the resistor, which is here. It's a one point, say 1.2k resistor, 1182 ohms resistor in, in reality. It basically connects that across this red wire so that current flows through this coil and that induces a fault current in the coil that is then picked up simply by this single turn. See this green wire? This is the one that's feeding that coil. It's not like a winding, it's just a single wire going through that. And that induces enough current in this little tiny coarse coil here to actually release that and trip the mechanism. That is weird. Other things worthy of note, it says this can be wired around either way, but when you press the test button, maybe they did this later on, but it used to be, well, it, certainly these days I'd expect that when you press the test button, it would disconnect this resistor when it tripped um, so that you couldn't actually hold it in all the time. But I suppose it doesn't really matter to a degree because this resistor is dissipating about 45 watts. It's 200 milliamps of uh, current passing through it, which is enough to do a good thorough test of this 100 milliamp trip breaker. But I've been, when it, it didn't trip and I was like, press the button thing, oh, it's not tripping. What I didn't realize was when I was pressing that button, this was basically being hooked across the incoming supply. Uh, and this resistor was dissipating that 45 watts of heat while I was pressing that. So if I'd actually don't ever push these buttons in and hold them, particularly in older breakers, uh, the resistors can go up in smoke. And I think that happens a lot with other breakers as well. Those uh, exploded Hager units come to mind. Um, 
when it uh, has tripped, it's supposed to break the connection. Typically, you'd have it uh, where it can be wired around either way. You'd have a connection going to the neutral at one side, live at the other, so that when you press the button, it trips. The power stops going through this resistor. In this case, it looks as though even if, if this was off and you were just randomly pushing the button, even with it off, that would be dissipating power in that resistor and potentially getting it very, very hot to the point of failure. Very odd. Uh, but that's about it. It's the simplest I've ever seen. We want to see inside this, don't we? We want to see what that material is. Right, one moment, please. It is just a roll of steel tape, super thin steel tape, uh, which they've spot welded. They've rolled it up. They've just spot welded the end here. They've dropped it into this container and then they've put a little lid on it with insulation inside. And that is how they've made the core. That is all it is. This is bizarre. And the rest of it will be a fairly traditional mechanism that when you actually press the reset button, it will push that little, it will reset that little plunger. But it will also be, once it latches, all it takes is that little plunger on that mechanism ping out that spring force when it's triggered, when it's released magnetically, to actually chip the mechanism. But in this case, uh, in my case, it didn't actually chip the mechanism. It must have just been dust, age, whatever. So there we go. Interesting stuff. Other things worthy of note. The TT system, with its earth electrode, uh, that means that for this to have been passing the fault current to ground for it to be eight, 8 amps, that suggests that the earth electrode resistance between the earth electrode outside my house and the local substation was 30 ohms. That's pretty good. Uh, but technically speaking, all the earth meta work in my house would have been going up to full mains potential uh, at the point of this uh, breaker failing and the no indication that, you know, that high current, I would have detected that on my uh, my little power monitor if it had been working at that time. It just decided that was one of the times it wasn't going to work. Uh, I would have detected that and it would have uh, alerted me that something was wrong. But very odd. Uh, so it has been replaced, but it's quite nicely made. It's the simplest I've ever seen, though. That's extraordinary. And it's kind of ironic that even these days, this is the same type of mechanism. It's the magnetic remnants that uh, it just relies on that tiny amount of current, literally a wire passing through that core with that 100 milliamp, milliamp differential current just to provide this small amount of current just to trip that and make the wee thing ping out. Very neat. So uh, that is it. That's what's inside a very, very old uh, Wilex RCD. Or as they called it, Earth Liquid Circuit Breaker. ELCB. Hmm, not heard that term used in a while. This must be really old. But there we go. Fascinating. Well worth taking apart. I have one last bit to add to this story, and it's how it amplifies the movement of that tiny little plastic pin in this unit, this little tiny spring-loaded pin, into enough force to actually trip the whole mechanism. It's very clever. It works like this. Imagine a shaft with a slight cut, a slot cut out it, and this arm here is actually pressing down on that. So the very slightest rotation of this, and it is actually just triggered by that pin just pushing up like that. The very slightest movement of this will result in that arm physically swing down. But that arm also doesn't take much pressure, but this is the one of the main parts of the mechanism. And this one is pressing against this shaft, which also has that little slice, that little side chamfer taken off. So that when this drops down, uh, that one can then also swing across that way. So for this is high force, that's medium force, and that is low force. So that pushing up lets this arm drop down, and that arm dropping down lets this arm swing in, and it just amplifies the force up each time. So the tiniest bit of pressure there triggers the next cascade effect, and that ultimately results in the thing tripping off. Very clever. Very neat indeed.